Hey everybody, it's Dustin again with the WebEx Devices team. And on this episode of the WebEx Edge, we're gonna take a little bit more of a deeper dive into web apps. And we're gonna do a couple demos, show you a couple different ways to add them and how to interact with them. So this is a continuation of a video I've already done, um, but this one's gonna be a little bit longer. We're gonna show you a couple things. Um, and then of course, uh, at the end, we will um, ask you to, to ask if you have any questions, we can do some follow-up videos, whatever. Um, but let's go ahead and get started here. So I've got a little bit of a different view for you today. As you'll notice that you've got the board behind me here, which is the board I'm working on, but I also have over here, uh, sorry, this way on, um, on your, uh, the video here is a, is a screen scrape basically of the actual interface of the board. So I'll be able to interact with that, give you a little bit better view than just me having a camera on it. And then um, down below here, I've actually got Chrome and I've got Control Hub pulled up here. So we're gonna walk through this so you can see everything real time together as we're making changes. So uh, down here below, I'm in uh, Google Chrome and you'll see my mouse here. Uh, I'm using the new workspaces, which we've done some videos on before. Um, but uh, of course, again, if you see anything here, you have any questions, just let me know. We'll do another video for it. Um, but the reason I've brought this up is, is I've got my board here and I'm going to um, click on it. And when I do, you'll see it'll bring up a little pop up here, uh, which is allow me to control the actual device itself. Now I've got some, uh, I've got anywhere from 10 to 15 devices in my lab at a time. So uh, I have proximity turned off. So you'll see some warnings here. That's normal uh, for my particular setup. But what I wanna do is scroll down here and have you see this particular area. Now we've shown this before, uh, the launch web portal. Uh, I am gonna do that because I'm gonna show you there's more than one way to do web apps. Uh, we've also got the uh, ability to set digital signage and we have a new configuration panel here to be able to set web apps directly from Control Hub. Now, I can do this directly on the web portal of the device, or I can do it from uh, Control Hub. And why would I want to do either or? And I just want to kind of real briefly go over a couple differences. Um, they're both very effective. The nice thing about Control Hub, and probably the big advantage is it gives you one central place to be able to manage it. But number two, um, it also gives you the ability um, to set uh, or provide web apps for devices that you do not have local access or direct access to. So when I go to launch web portal, which I'm gonna go ahead and do here so we can see that, um, the great thing about this is, is it does kind of cross launch me and uh, authenticate me into the device itself using my cloud credentials. Um, but the, the big caveat here is that I have to be able to route to it, I have to be able to get to it. So if I have a device that's off net, if I'm working from home and I don't have uh, access to that device directly, I can't launch and use this option to be able to get to this uh, GUI interface. So the nice thing about Control Hub is it gives me the ability to do some advanced configuration changes. And now I can actually send down um, web apps uh, directly from Control Hub without having direct access to that device. So since we're already here inside this uh, web UI, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few things here. Um, so in order to do this, you go to the integration tab and you're gonna go to the new UI extensions editor. So when we go here, uh, one thing you'll see here, and as you can see on my, um, on my board and uh, uh, let's see here, yes, that way, on the uh, upper right hand corner where you see the WebEx Edge boards uh, interface, uh, you'll see that I already have one for Miro. And this is just one that I had created. I wanted to kind of show that we had one here. Uh, it's showing up here. Um, and I'm gonna create another one uh, and show you just how simple it is to do from here. And then we're gonna go and add some from Control Hub. Uh, and we'll do a couple demo of these as well. So the, the main parts of this is that you would name your app Miro and that's why it's actually showing up uh, here. Uh, as you see on uh, my mouse cursor, you see that it says Miro um, and that's the name of the app. Uh, if I change that, it would change what the app would be called. Um, this is my URL. Uh, one thing I want to add here too is that there is a web app icon URL. Now this is optional. What we will do is we, when you put in a URL to a web app, we will um, uh, pull what we call a favicon from the website if it has it. If it doesn't, then we're just going to show a generic logo. Um, so you do have some sites out there that do not provide that for you. And if that's the case, you can quite simply just put a URL of a uh, accessible uh, image or file that you want to have show up uh, on there. We give you some, uh, it has to be a, an, an icon or a PNG, JPEG, etc. You see the information uh, that's listed right here uh, and the maximum resolution. Um, but that'll allow you to kind of customize your icon if you would like. So especially if it's a custom app uh, or if it's something that doesn't have a favicon, you can just uh, use this. Uh, one other thing that I do want to show you here is, and this may not show up on yours, is that I have a couple options here. And this is a little bit of a sneak peek, something we're getting ready to start an EFT on. But right now this is set to only out of call and that's by default. 
So today, uh, web apps can only be used outside of a call. However, um, we are going to be starting soon, and I'll do another video to demo this shortly, um, an EFT, which will allow you to uh, share a web app in call and allow you to interact with it in call, which could be quite useful. Uh, and if you're doing that and you want to have that app available in call, then you would switch this to always. And then when you're in a call and you bring up your menu, you'd be able to press that web app. It would start a screen share and people would be able to see you interacting with your web app. So stay tuned for that. We're not going to do it in this video. we got a lot to cover, so we'll just leave that as is. But I wanted to let you know in case you didn't see this. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead real quick and just show you again, uh, or just show you kind of from scratch how to create an app. So I'm going to go ahead and create new. Now, you're probably familiar if you have a room series with these panel and action button ads, um, if you've looked at the UI extension editor before. But one thing that's unique to our interactive devices, so that'll be the boards and the Desk Pro, for example, um, is the web app icon. So right now that's exclusive just to the interactive devices. Um, and the main reason behind that is we're defining or we call a web app essentially something that you can interact with. And that's the only devices today that you can do that with. So you will not see this option on room series. So just be mindful of that. Also, you will not see the web app option um, inside of Control Hub for those devices either. So uh, again, limitation today to interactive devices only. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add, and you'll see here it brings up another generic uh, pane for me here. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and call this one something easy, YouTube, since you're watching this on a channel. And then I'm just going to put the URL, so www.youtube.com. And then go ahead and scroll down. I'm going to leave it to always out of call. So this is pretty much it. Uh, I have the ability to change my position. So right now this is going to go um, to the right of Miro. So just to show you here, I'm going to press this icon up to up here, this blue icon, export the configuration. Uh, I'm going to say OK. And if you'll notice, um, both uh, uh, right here and, of course, behind me, you can kind of see out of the, the key that you do have this YouTube um, icon. Now, you'll notice there, as I was talking, it changed on me. So it went, we were able to fetch that favicon, put the YouTube uh, icon up there, and we were good to go. And, and that's how that works. But you saw the generic one prior because uh, it hadn't fetched that, that uh, icon yet. Just to show you one more thing here, I'm going to take and I'm going to move the positions of these panels. And you see here, I've moved it to the top. And then I'm going to push this and say, OK. And then you'll notice uh, right here and then behind me, they have swapped places, so now they're actually in order. Uh, one other thing that I will show you is uh, I'm going to create one more, and we'll call this one Cisco. And I'll just put www.cisco.com. Again, this can be any accessible uh, web page. And I'm going to push this one up, say OK. Now, you notice that on the board, we now have a little uh, a tray table here, which is basically allowing me to swipe and you'll see that I now have a new page of uh, web apps. And then I'm gonna swipe back, and you saw it back there on the board as well. But I just kinda wanna show you what happens as they fall in line. So you'll have the three by three grid, and that'll continue on with various pages. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you here while we're inside of this is I'm gonna hit the Cisco logo up top here, go back. Uh, I wanna show you one more thing, and that's because we're gonna do some other cool apps um, that we have available. And I wanna show you how you can enable an experimental feature we have, uh, which will allow for WebGL on your websites or your, your web apps that you use. And this is a neat feature that uh, we have under experimental. It's not officially supported, but we allow people to, uh, people to turn it on. And I wanna show you how you would do that. So under setup, you're gonna to go to configuration, and then you can quite easily just do a search right here for WebGL. And I've actually got mine turned on, but it's under uh, the web engine here. And you'll see here, by default, this will be off. But if you turn on the WebGL feature, just simply turn that on, save that, you'll have the ability to load up sites that utilize WebGL. And one of the demos I'm going to do when we show you from Control Hub here actually uses this WebGL uh, uh, technology and feature. So I wanted to be able to show you that. OK, so now we're going back to Control Hub. Now from here, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hit my web apps. And I will say this, we do not have a synchronization between locally onboarded um, web apps and ones that you create in Control Hub. So right now, if you create something in Control Hub, you'll be able to see it, um, but Control Hub will manage it. But uh, web apps that are created locally on the device will not show up in Control Hub today. So I'm going to, as you'll see here, we, it doesn't show that I have any, but we're going to go ahead and add some. So I'm going to add one here. And I've got a couple uh, things already uh, created here. 
Uh, I'm going to do this one right here that's called, we call it fluid. So I'm going to say F L U I D. And I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to paste the URL and click add. And then I have a pretty cool little uh, app here from uh, Local Measure, and it's called Slides. So I'm going to create another one. And I'm going to hit Add. Whoops, and let me uh, get some better typing here. And we're going to add three and drop my URL. And then lastly, we have a pretty cool Hollow Builder app demo that we're going to pull up here. And I'm going to add it. Call it Hollow Builder. Paste it. And then hit Add. So I've got these three added here. I can rearrange these by moving them around, as you see here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just hit Save. And these will be saved to the board. Now, almost immediately, you can see behind me and you can see in the, uh, the box right here, these are starting to add up um, and they have put up in order. So you see Fluid has already uh, fetched its favicon. Uh, I'm going to slide over here. You'll see we've got Hollow Builder, YouTube, Miro, and there's my Cisco one. So there they are all, all in a row. One thing you'll notice is that Cisco and this slides does not have a favicon pulled automatically. So this is where I would want to add a favicon uh, for, for an image to be able to actually have that populate. But again, as you can see, we've got these added in right here. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and, uh, oops, sorry about that. Let me pull this uh, tray down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, start to do some demos. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my Miro one and I'm going to bring it up. Now you'll see it's actually happening behind me, but again, right here, uh, you're seeing the screen uh, populate as well. So this is loading that web app, loading that web page. Uh, and this is just a, a example demo of, of Miro. Uh, and you can see here that uh, I can select uh, items. Um, and I can move them around if I wanted to move this whole uh, unit right here. Um, but again, I have the ability to do that on the board. Uh, I have the ability to do that here, uh, showing you that that got load up, loaded up. Now I'm going to go back here uh, again, show you one of the other ones that we created. Uh, this is YouTube. Click on the link and you'll see that it's opening YouTube for me. And then just very quickly, we'll let this kind of load up here. Uh, you'll see behind me. Whoops. That's one of my WebEx Edge videos. Uh, and then now I'll show you some of these other ones. So remember I told you about this fluid. This is the one that uses WebGL. So I'm going to kind of show you it. It's a really cool demo. So I'm going to click on it. It'll take it just a second to load here. But you'll see this behind me. Um, now my screen scrape is uh, not quite as fluid as the, uh, the video behind me here. Um, but as I draw on it, you see much better behind me here. I've got this really cool demo happening of me interacting with this uh, with this board. But this is leveraging WebGL. So I kind of wanted to show you, uh, you know, just some really cool things and just some possibilities of some of the features that are available on our devices. And then lastly, I will show you this one right here called Slides, uh, which is something, again, just another uh, use case concept that you can see. Uh, and this right here is basically showing some uh, Cisco um, uh, social media posts and things that are happening um, and it kind of populates so it could be used for some form of digital signage for example um, but in a nutshell let me go back here uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today let me go back to my uh, regular view here so I appreciate you guys watching uh, I hope that's helpful uh, let me know if you have any questions on this we showed a few things today this is a little bit longer than usual video so I apologize for that but I do hope that you find it helpful so if you have any specific questions, please comment, ask questions below. Uh, we've got a bunch more in this series that we're wanting to do. So I hope this was helpful again and look forward to seeing you guys next time. So thanks and have a great week.